can still work together in a friendly and professional manner. And that, I mean, we've become the laughing stock of the Miami Valley. Everyone points to Huber and says, oh, you live there. Well, how about that council? You know, there's always some underhanded comment. And that's not what we're looking for for the city's image. Yeah, I, I think if they would follow the charter, do what the uh, people of Huber Heights want them to do, um, and if there's a decision made that another council person doesn't like, uh, they agree to disagree and move forward and, and stop, you know, just beating the nail. I mean, it's just, it's not, it's Absolutely. not helpful. So anyway, uh, getting a little opinionated. Sorry about that. Uh, oh, no, you're fine. So, uh, what, what do you think is, you know, let's go to s- some positive things here. What, what do you think is working for Huber Heights right now and something that you and the new, uh, candidates can, uh, to work on? Yeah. Well, a lot of things I like to see are the community driven events. You know, the, the farmer's market is a huge success. Love it. And, yeah. uh, and, uh, Huber Jeff has really put a lot of work into that and he's done a great job, I think, with organizing all that. And there's usually a pretty good turnout every time I've been out there. Yeah. Missy um, is, helps him out a lot with that as well, too. Yeah. 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 Um, and then they've got the, the community, uh, movie nights. Those are really a success. They're getting ready to have one tonight, actually. Yeah. I've seen uh, Lego some posts Batman, on that. I think. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, there, there, there's a lot of things the city does, does well. Um, I just think that, you know, if we started enforcing more of the zoning laws, you know, instead of just enforcing what seems to be <laughs> political yard signs, <laughs> yeah. I think we'd be a lot better off. I think, uh, there's a lot of properties that, that, and, and, and how home values that could, could use that, but, uh, we'll All have right. to look at those more closely, I think in the future. Now, am I mistaken or, or did I see that uh, Montgomery County, uh, that Huber Heights, some of the home values are rising again. Is that is that something that I don't know? Um, it's kind of a mixed bag. From from what I've heard lately, there, there's um, depending on where you live, there, there's some that are rising, but um, a lot more of our our properties, I think, are actually decreasing in value, and it's really because we're we're ignoring our southern our southern end. Uh, we're we're kind of just letting Fine Brook run it uh, instead of, you know, building anything there other than a pizza joint or a, or a auto parts store. Mm-hmm. And that really does hurt. So do you think the, uh, just enforcing the existing zoning laws, uh, would be sufficient or is there something that you feel that needs developed to help boost that part of the city? Well, um, I don't know that the existing uh, zoning laws would be enough. Um, I, I do think we need to at least revisit and uh, those and come up with better solutions, maybe more modern zoning laws, and actually follow them. Because our city, that's what another problem is. Uh, whether it's zoning laws, whether it's charter, we, we don't seem to want to follow our own rules, or at least enforce our own rules, which brings me to or pick the and city choose. manager position, you know, that's that's another thing in and of itself. Right. But uh, to me, um, you have someone in Rob Schomer who has, you know, devoted his life to being a police chief and a city manager, you know, helping out our city. But for one reason or another, doesn't care to live in our city. And to me, that's a problem. You know, I some people don't see it as a big deal, but uh, it's it's in our charter, you know, should live in the city. Uh, and they, there's a lot of people that want to hang on to the, the statewide law. But to me, um, I think if, if you have someone with a legal background that looks at the state law, um, that really would not apply to uh, Rob's position being an executive position. Sure. So and, I, and I think we are in, in uh, violation of that. And to be fair, it, it, no matter who is in that position, it should be a position – um, and I would go further in, in the way I see it, but it, at least for that, that was voted on in, uh, last November. Uh, here it yeah. is, uh, almost a year later and that still hasn't been decided, uh, or exactly. it's been decided, but it still hasn't been taken up by the council. The council continues to refuse to uh, adhere to that, but to be fair, 
anyone that sits in that executive position should, in my opinion, be a Huber Heights resident. Um, but we talked about this. I don't know if you know, Chase, I sat on the, uh, uh, charter review committee, uh, last year. And, uh, this, okay. this was talked about and I was, I, uh, Richard Shaw sat there too. And I uh, sat on the committee as well. And I believe he was with me as well, where we said this, I mean, it's nothing personal against anybody. I think, um, the current city manager is, a very decent person. I think he's a great person. Uh, he does, uh, and has done a lot for the city of Huber Heights. But having said all that, the position should be and remain a Huber Heights resident. And that was a mistake that they made and they're still not continuing to fix. But anywho. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's become its own, uh, beast so to speak <laughs> and what where to go uh, at with it um since we've taken it to the voters and it's and they've the voters have, have agreed with our existing uh local law mm-hmm. um whether to take that any further or not you know there's there's a lot of uh words being thrown around <laughs> both legally and just personally about that and it's sure um, and i and i understand that and i do you know uh I understand there's a legal aspect to it and I understand there's um, strong opinions about it, but the charter is the charter. Once we start or Huber or council starts to not adhere to the charter on one issue, what else are they willing to not adhere to? What else are they willing to bend the rules on, so to speak? So, you know, that's something they, they should have fixed when they, I mean, this is one of the things that, it has frustrated me uh, since live in Texas now, so it really has no bearing on on my life. But it it frustrates me that they're continuing to do that to the residents of Huber Heights because it doesn't it doesn't set a good precedent anyway. Yeah, you're right. It it, it really is a, a dangerous precedent to set when you know you have laws that you are supposed to Im- impose and in you you have them in your own rules and regulations so to speak and yet when it when it's convenient for members of council or members of staff anywhere in the city to you know not enforce or follow those laws it it, it sets a very bad example and precedent and it's it's never a healthy thing for a city to do and uh, i i think in the future we'll find um we, we should have, you know, enforced, enforced those laws uh, as they are in our charter. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yep. Let's see here. Um, so a lot of times, I don't, I don't know how you feel uh, with the social media aspect of council back and forth on that. Uh, I think it can be used for good. I think uh, a lot of times people are on the social media um have really great ideas, really good opinions. I, I'm not a big fan of the arguments that happen on there. What, what is your feeling on that? If, if you're elected as the councilman at large, do you plan to use social media or do you, I've heard other candidates say they, they just want to keep it. I, I don't know. The best way to say it is they don't want to take part in the social media or they want to keep it silent or quiet. And... Sure. I, I think um, that there's there's pluses and minuses, of course. Um, I, as you probably know, very rarely post anything on uh, any of the many uh, city pages on Facebook, mm-hmm. in particular. Um, there, there are a lot of um, negative. There's a lot of negativity that go goes on, and I think a, a nice balance is to understand that social media can be used and harnessed in a way to let the people contact their elected officials and be able to reach out and, and maybe voice their opinions to their elected officials on how they would like to see the city move on a particular issue. And so that, that to that point, I think, you know, maybe there's a happy medium of you just sticking to your own, your own uh, council seats webpage and maybe posting stuff uh, on your your ward page or on your personal page, but engaging in on in these uh, these uh, 
group pages and and arguments and stuff that we see as some on council do is just it's really uncalled for it's unnecessary it's beneath the office of which they hold and uh, i mean i understand the, the the need or the want to defend oneself when attacked but you have to you have to at some point uh, kind of rise above that and maybe address it in a different format Mm-hmm. Uh, because you you become a punching bag uh, on social media websites, and the, it, your words are very very easily taken out of context anyway when they're just in text form. Uh, so what I would do if, sure. if elected is I would not comment on an open forum on, on a page on Facebook um, if a if a citizen or resident had had a question for me they could they could ask me through my own personal page or they could you know ask me through the ward page uh, or the, the, the at large page which i uh would would be setting up if elected okay uh, great i think that's i think that's a nice medium in between sure and i agree and folks like me i'm i'm very vocal on those pages uh only because i'm I'm just, I don't know, I guess a loud mouth. I don't, <laughs> but no, I don't hold a position like that. My opinions are strong, but you know, it boils down for, I think a lot of those people and I understand where their frustration comes because there is, as we said before, there's a lot of things that, that could be done professionally and the right way, holding to the charter, not having these public arguments not continuing arguments that don't need to be continued. If something is, is already uh, voted on and done, move on because there's other things the city needs to work on. But you know, that's the frustration that a lot of people I see on those pages voice their opinions on with the residents and, and whatnot. But anyway, so what are you working on now? Um, you said you had an event today and uh, where are you guys, uh, where, where's the campaign going from here? Well, yeah, like I said, we had a, uh, my campaign and David Wilson's campaign had a kind of a joint meet and greet, that's what we call them, at TJ Chumps today in Huber. Uh, we had a decent turnout. Uh, we're looking to do a couple more, which uh, in a few days I'm sure we'll be posting uh, some more dates uh, and meet and greet times for the people to look at and kind of get uh, more involved because. Uh, believe it or not, we're already getting down to the nitty gritty. Uh, November is just around the corner, and aside from uh, going door to door, at least myself, we're we're looking at different different things we can do uh, to help get the word out. With uh, whether it be social media is a good help there, you know, and and organizing people to help with with the walking door to door and passing out literature and uh, Marigold Festival. Uh, we're going to try and get tables there set some stuff out for everybody, kind of introduce ourselves to those people. And mm-hmm. I go to the farmer's market every one, every few uh, weeks or so, not every week, because uh, I, I don't have every weekend open. But when I can, I do try and get up there and see the people and uh, talk to a few of them and go from there. But it's, it's really, really fun. So we've got a lot of events that will be coming out more so in the next two months especially and more opportunities for the people to come and ask us questions and get to know us. Uh, And if folks wanted to get to know you uh, and find out about these events, where would they go to? Is there a website or anything like that? Well, I don't have a website. I have a a Facebook uh, page. It's uh, Chase Warden uh, uh, for Huber Heights Council at large. And that'll be, uh, you can find me on Facebook, go to my, just, Chase at Chase Warden, and uh, there's a link there too. Um, so you should be able to find me there. All right. Um, well, before we uh, end this podcast, uh, is there anything else you want to leave us with before we end it? Well, um, not really. I'd just m- maybe say that uh, I, I really appreciate the opportunity of, of uh, you offering to let me come on here and, and speak to everybody. Sure. Um, I I do hope that we can get to a point where instead of divisiveness, we, we're, we're more uh, uh, we have more growth uh, personality wise and and uh, economically and uh, our, our council can grow instead of divide and, and, and do what it's doing now. Um, 
there, there's a few people that I think are, are to blame for that, but they're all they all have been guilty at 